Well, hello everyone. I'm Marty Greif, and today we're going to be talking about conversion tips for, you know, basically how to create a good landing page experience. Before I get started, uh, let me just share one thing, a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I'm, uh, as we all are a lot these days, working from home. And uh, for whatever reason, my internet connection has been going up and down today like a yo-yo, which is very unusual. So if we have a blip today, let me apologize in advance. Uh, my connection just came back online literally 10 minutes before this started. I wasn't sure what we were going to do, um, but the, uh, the internet gods were uh, looking favorably upon us so we can get started. So with that all said, uh, let's, uh, let's dig right in. So we're going to be talking about creating a good landing page experience, but these are the general topics. Uh, deliver what you promised. And I'm going to explain that in detail. This is probably one of the number one problems with landing pages that I see is people don't deliver what was promised. And, and that doesn't make any sense yet, but I promise you that it will. And then we're going to talk about some of the other obvious things like using of color schemes, removing distractions. When you use videos, you do them appropriately, making sure it loads fast making sure that if you're capturing form data, you, you, you're not obnoxious about it, you've got good error messages and give reasons for requiring you know, personal information. So with that said, you know, what is the user experience? You know, we're talking about landing pages, we gotta talk about what a user experience is. Now, user experience is basically any of the interactions that a user has or a visitor has with your you know, organization. Now, today we're focusing on their landing page experience, but it really goes way beyond that. You could have a magnificent landing page and they, uh, they sign up for a service and then your follow on email sequences are awful, right? If all of your touch points, if all of these, uh, these different interactions with your visitors aren't optimized, just fixing one of them might move you a little bit further along, but it's not going to solve, you know, all of your issues. Uh, just as an aside, uh, and the, the company will remain nameless, but we worked with this one company where we really created this amazing website experience and their, their sales went through the roof. But when they delivered their product, it came in this, this box that looked like who did it and ran. And so there was no branding on it. It, it looked like they didn't care. And it was thrown together. And so there was no reason for people to reorder or to recommend. So, so all of these things all right, are all part of your user experience. So you want to make sure that you're looking at all of them. But today, we're going to talk about websites and specifically about landing pages. So by providing this great experience with people, and I've actually done videos on this, you know, you can keep a user loyal to your product or brand, you know, so, so it's not just a one-off thing. It is all of it together. Now on the website, you know, it's the design, it's the navigation. If you're asking for a transaction or a form, all of that has to be done in a way that actually makes sense for the visitor so that they feel really comfortable. Um, by the way, uh, as an aside, if you have questions when we're going through this, feel free to, uh, to add questions in the Q&A and, and I may answer them you know, during the presentation or as we get to the end. All right, so you know, what is a landing page? Let's talk about that. And, and here's, here's the first thing I wanna say. I, I, if you get nothing else out of this discussion today, I really want you to think differently about landing pages, all right? A landing page is any page that a user lands on first. Now, we, we usually think of landing pages as a dedicated landing page, or it could be a squeeze page. You know, we have some ad, whether it be a, you know, a Google ad or a, you know, a, a Facebook ad or a whatever you're doing, right? And it goes to a, a landing page where you're trying to get them to sign up, buy something and so on. But those aren't the only types of landing pages. Your home page is a landing page potentially. You, and every page on your website, you know, that is SEO'd could potentially be a landing page. So when you're looking at all of your pages, you really want to think more than just 
dedicated landing pages, although we're gonna focus mostly on that today. Um, but it's really all about where are they landing when they, when they go to your website. I'll give you another example that's not on this list. What if you're, you're using um, uh, you know, Google Shopping ads and they're going directly to a product page for an e-commerce site? Well, product pages on e-commerce sites are not designed as landing pages. Landing pages have certain things or elements associated with them that a product page does not necessarily have, right? And so really all I'm asking you to do is think a little bit out of the box and think about what pages are they landing on and just accept that those are your landing pages. So then if you do that, you wanna change your mindset and think a little bit more about conversion. This is all about you know, a good experience, but at the end of the day, you aren't doing this because you want the visitor just to have a good experience. You want them to take some kind of action, right? And that's a conversion, whether it's a subscription or a sale or a lead or a whatever it is you're doing, right? You want some type of conversion. So I would like you to think about where they might potentially be landing and then add to that all right, how do I drive my traffic there? Is it PVC for conversion? So it's not just about clicks. It's about aligning those messages. Is it SEO for conversion? If we're doing all this SEO work, when they land on the page and they looked at the metadata, did it make sense for them when they got there? Is it conversion oriented? What is their experience? Social media marketing for conversion. It's all the same thing. So it's not just about the landing page and what, what that page could potentially be. It's also about a slight shift in your mindset to make sure that whatever you're doing not only matches the user needs, but at the same time is getting them to take whatever the desired action is. So this first thing that we're gonna talk about is delivering what you promise. And I gotta tell you, I see this done incorrectly so many times that it, it, it boggles the mind. And I don't mean I see this just from our clients. We all, you know, surf the internet for different things. And you see either, um, you know, an ad or a metadata in the, in the SERPs, you know, uh, in, in the organic search, and you click on it and you go, what is this, All right? Because what was promised in the upstream messaging isn't what they get. And so let me give you an example here. And, and we can argue about this first one here a little bit. I did a Google search for solitaire diamond rings. And up came a, a really nice ad, all right, for solitaire diamond rings, all right? And then I get to the landing page. Now, here's the thing. Let's say for the sake of argument that I was looking to buy uh, a solitaire uh, diamond engagement ring, you know, for my girlfriend, all right? Uh, you know, now that was 34 years ago, you know, I've been married that long, but, but I don't know a solitaire ring if it came and bit me on the, on the foot, right? What is a solitaire ring? I don't know. So the problem is even though solitaire diamond rings, which is what, you know, let's pretend I'm, I'm shopping. That's what my, my fiance to be told me she wanted was a solitaire diamond ring. I see this wonderful ad. And then I get to this page and I go, I don't know. It doesn't help me any. So if we contrast that to the same exact search, again, seeing a really nice ad, and then we go to this page and it tells me, here are solitaire diamond rings, all right? And I know, I know you're, you know, for those of you who, who maybe knew that was already what a solitaire diamond ring was, you can't assume that for your visitor. You have, and I've said this, for those of you who've been with me before, you have to design as if your visitor was lazy and or stupid and no disrespect meant to anybody. But if you design for, for that, smart people aren't gonna be upset by it because they can breeze through it. So by giving me what was asked for in my Google search, what happens is when I land on the page, I go, oh yes, I'm in the right place. I feel really good about it and I'm not gonna bounce. So. You really have to deliver, think about what was promised, you know, not only in, the, in, in, the, in your ad, but also what is delivered on your page. And some of that goes all the way back to the original search query, whatever they were asking, okay? Um, here's another example, activewear in Florida, you know, searching for activewear in Florida. And I, and I never pronounce this right. I, I gather 
it's it's bells, although to me that's pronounced Beals the way it's spelled, but it, apparently it's 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 Bells, Florida. So this is a real thing. That took me to this. Okay, this is you know talk about not a good landing exchange experience. Now, so as crazy as it sounds, I can't tell you how many times I've actually been searching for something myself, and I wind up on a page like this, or, you know, like I was searching, I'll give you an example. I was searching for cable providers, you know, to change my, well, well, as I already talked at the beginning, my internet's going up and down. So at one point I was looking for, you know, replacing the internet with somebody else. And I did a search and, and then it says, put in, I, I get a nice ad and I put in a zip code and guess what? It says, we don't have it in your area. Really? Well, why are you showing me an ad? So you really have to make sure that what is promised is delivered. And that's not just on desktop, it's on mobile too, all right? So, and let me just show you, uh, you know, another example. Activewear Florida, right? Fitness Hub Shop, all right? Activewear. And then when we land here, all right, we've got Fitness Hub and Activewear, you know, and, you know, they happen to be in Florida, all right? But my point is, this is what came out. So what was promised? Uh, was actually delivered in here. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's on desktop or on mobile. If if your visitors are looking for something, and I know this sounds obvious, guys, I know this sounds obvious, but I swear to you, if you went and looked at your your upstream messaging and looked at where you it landed people, you would find things that just don't make sense, all right? Here's another example. You know, we were searching for track employees hours per client project. Well, we're an agency, so this is the kind of thing that we do, right? So, you know, Paycom, easy time clock software. So the ad says what it does, right? But then when I land on it, okay, it feels more like uh, it's a payroll system versus what I was originally looking for. So this is causing me to think and ask the question, like, am I in the right place? I'm not really sure if I'm in the right place. And when you confuse people like that, well, what do they do? They bounce because this is just frustrating to them, okay? As opposed to Clockify, which by the way, we use, right? And pay for, um, you know, track employee hours per client, you know, free project time tracker. And look what it says, free project time tracker, you know, and it says track how many billable hours you and your employees spend working on projects. So all the things that I was looking for actually show up on that landing page so this makes it a really good experience. What was promised is then delivered. Hopefully that makes a ton of sense to everyone. And I know, I know that I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I promise you, if you look at your ads and you look at your, your, your SERPs your, for your SEO data, and you look at what's presented in the metadata, for example, or in your ad copy, and then you go to that page, you will probably wind up unpleasantly surprised, okay? And not that I'm trying to beat a dead horse, but I mean, these are big companies that are having these issues. So here's an ad, create landing pages that convert, right? And so Wix, uh, Wix is not a small company, okay? And I come here and, all right, what, it, what is this free landing page? So they're giving me a free landing page or, or, or they're teaching me how to hike, or, I mean, the picture is not adding any value, or I'm not really sure what the point of that is. I, I understand from a branding perspective what they're trying to accomplish, but this is what I would call a failure because I'm looking for, look at the ad, the best landing page creator, boost your conversion rate, and then I land on this page. Tell me how that ad has anything to do with this page that I landed on. And the answer is, I don't know. I'm going to have to dig and look and think. And this is not a small company. So even large companies do this. All right. Create stunning landing pages. Like, or create landing pages. Great. Create stunning landing page, 30 day from Landing page. Stunning pages in just a few clicks. All right. So at basically what they said in their ad is what they're delivering, you know, in their response. So it, it really tells me landing pages. There's no question here. Create, you know, and it's talking about creating them held pages that convert your traffic. It's got the words. It matches what I was looking for. So this, this is an example of doing it the right way. All right. Then this one here, build land, create uh, converting landing pages, try to lead pages for free. Okay. You know, easily create your website and landing pages, you know, 
Uh, and then, and again, it, it goes on to that. But again, I know I'm in the right place and I'm not wondering about, and, the, and their imagery matches. You know, they're showing landing pages versus people hiking in the mountains, all right? Um, same problem here on mobile, you know, you know, here, you know, create a website you're proud of. Well, at least we're getting it a little different. So they're using an adaptive experience as opposed to, on the other hand, if you look at get response and lead pages, they absolutely just nail it. Right. So Rick's did a little bit better job, but these people absolutely nailed it. So hopefully that makes sense. So before we talk about color schemes, and I know I'm on that slide, I really just want to go back one last time. Your landing pages to get them to have good experiences. And again, a good experience is, is I think there's two things involved in this. Giving what you're promising and then having it organized in such a way that they actually do what you want them to do. You don't want them bouncing. You don't want them wandering around in your website like they're lost in the desert for 40 years, okay? You want them to take whatever the desired action is, all right? So if you align that user intent with whatever their search query was to whatever the ad and or metadata in your, uh, your SEO pages are, are to the actual experience they have, you've solved the first problem, which is you have delivered what was promised or what they expected in their upstream messaging, okay? All right, next one. Um, and this one, I see this all the time. You wanna train your visitors with, with a color scheme. And so I've seen, and what do I mean by this? If you, if you want them to click on something, you know, whatever your primary call to action is, you wanna make sure that whether it's on the landing page and the scroll, it's multiple times on the page, or it's across pages, if maybe they're digging your landing page, lets them go in deeper into the site. You know, it depends, there's different types of pages. But assuming that we, 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 we want them to see a, a, you know, a call to action, potentially more than once, you wanna train them so that that color is always the same color used for your primary call to action. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to use that same color for all of your accent colors because you're diluting your call to action color. You want to make sure that, and I'll make it, if red is your call to action color, don't be using red elsewhere except very minimally, all right? Red means click here or green means click here, or I don't care what your color is, all right? My point is don't mix and match have your, your call to action colors actually make sense. So if we look at this, here's an example, all right, of, of a before image. And we've got all sorts of different colors, you know, here. We've got orange, we've got blue, we've got white, we've got, you know, multiple things going on here. And so we're not training the visitor on what the colors mean, okay? As opposed to, we changed it to, Orange here is the call to action colors, which basically says orange is click here. Now, I, we're showing you here secondaries in addition to primary calls to action. The primary is the orange with the, uh, with the white text in it, where the secondary is, is the reverse, right, on that. But so when you have primary, you're going to make your secondary calls to action similar in some ways to your primary. So again, you're training your visitors and at a glance, they can look at this and they know it just makes sense, okay? And again, it doesn't matter whether or not we are on a desktop or on a mobile, it's the same logic. Now I am gonna just point out one thing, you'll notice on the, on the mobile, uh, they've got the click to call icon. The click to call icon is also uh, a primary call to action. So it's that, that orange color. So open an account, open an account is primary. Okay, schedule a demo is secondary. So it's, it's, uh, it's transparent with the, with the orange words as opposed to white. So if you notice on the top, it says see more clients. It's transparent on the bottom, it's schedule a demo, but we're basically telling them orange text is the secondary call to action. Uh, Another example here on this one is, you know, their calls to action are all over all over the map here. We've got green uh, for find your information section. We've got uh, find your course, which is red. We've got learn more, which is orange. And if you scroll down on this page, you would see even more. All right, so they're, they're literally, uh, it's, it's almost like every color of the rainbow. As opposed to the after, you'll notice that 
the primary calls to action here are the green box with the white text. Or again, they pop out and you're training your users on what it is to do here. And you'll notice that the secondary, they've used a link color, which is the green below, learn more about teaching, how do I make it happen? So again, it's consistent, which just makes you know a, a lot more sense. Okay. Um, removing distractions. So it's easy for us to get distracted. And if I, if I even I went back to that last page where there were all of those colors, you know, on the on the on the on the landing page, you know, it, it's it's almost like a smorgasbord for the eyes. Your eyes don't know where to focus. So you don't want to overuse, you know, colors or or have your visual emphasis really off. And one of the things that I, I'm going to say, and, and those of you who have been with me before have heard me say this, please, please, please don't have movement on your 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 website and is rotating. Uh, banners or, you know, some kind of animation, obviously it's not going to be in flash, but the idea is, you know, animation of some type, right? And, and the, the issue here is that um, animation or, or movement is a danger signal for us because literally, and, and I know some of you heard this before, but if you go back 50,000 years and we were literally cave people sitting in our, our cave, eating our hunk of meat around the fire, when there was movement, that was potentially a danger signal that said, oh, what's that? Oh my God, you know, like a bear is coming to eat me or, what, or, or a rival tribe is coming to, to murder my family, right? It's some crazy thing. So whenever there's movement, that causes what we call cognitive friction. It interrupts the thought process and makes it so that I have to stop what I'm thinking and go, what's that? What's that? And that is not something you want to have happen on your website, all right? Now, there's some exceptions to the rules. Like, I mean, if you are have a site that is, uh, you know, um, experiential in nature, meaning that you were, um, you know, selling helicopter skiing trips, you're probably going to have some video, you know, in the background. So there are some exceptions to it. But in general, the place you want to have... Uh, you know, movement or is in a banner ad on somebody else's site because you do want to interrupt their thought processes elsewhere. You just don't want to interrupt people's thought processes on your site, right? You want people to very calmly and smoothly go through what's going on on your site. The other one that, that happens all the time is, is entry pops. And this one, and forgive me, and I'm going to go through some examples of stuff here too, but, but entry pops, this is one of those things that just drives me, you know, nuts, all right? Because people say, well, when we put this entry pop on, our, our, we got more signups, we got more of this, we got more of that. And here's the reality. All that tells me is that if an entry pop is doing good things for you, it means your underlying website is not optimized and is not good. Because I promise you, if you have a highly optimized underlying website or a highly optimized landing page, if you put an entry pop on it, you will lower and hurt your conversions. It doesn't do the reverse. It only helps your conversions when what you've got under the covers isn't good, okay? And then the other thing is sudden pop-ups, and we've seen those even on a lot of the pages. Now, by the way, I am a fan of pop-ups, as long as the pop-up adds value, or if it's an exit pop, it's one more bite at the apple. So pop-ups are fine if they're used correctly and not just interrupting my thought process. You know, I'm on, I'm on a website. I don't need someone in my face, you know, going, hey, 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 you know, that just annoys people, right? And again, if you're doing it and it's working for you, you really need to take a bigger look or a closer look at your landing page and or website to figure out why it's not converting without it. All right, let's look at an example here. Um, uh, the top image here on this, and you can't really see it, was a rotating banner, you know, and, uh, you know, this unfortunately caused all sorts of, of, of confusion as to where to start, as opposed to we turned that and made it a much cleaner, easier to use look, okay? Um, uh, so let's see. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions about rotating banners or movement. So let me ask, answer a couple of these. So, um, uh, it says, as far as moving, oh, by the way, when I'm looking to the side, just so you don't think I'm schizophrenic here, in front of me is the presentation I'm giving to the side is all the questions and everything. So I'm not ignoring you when I'm looking this way. 
All right, uh, does your steering wheel rotation of high memory images slide in or text fade in? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we actually have an example of that uh, where, it, where, and we've tested this, by the way, multiple times, you know, and again, there's exception to every rule, but nine times out of 10, those fade in and things moving, you know, are a no no. Now, here's the weird thing. If you go to our site, you will actually see some of the things that I'm telling you not to do. And you might go, well, Marty, why would you, would you do things on your site that you're saying we're not to do? It's because we're a digital marketing agency. And if we don't do some of those things that people expect, you know, then as crazy as it sounds, they're going to think, oh, we're not with it in modern. So there's reasons why we did some. Like I said, there's an exception to every rule. But our site is off the charts optimized. And, and just as an aside, years ago, it, so if you're doing lead gen, our site is a great example of B2B lead gen. Uh, years ago, we were like the shoemaker's children where our site was embarrassing. I mean, just embarrassing, you know, and we relaunched a new site in, in um, I think it was May of 2019. And we have monthly meetings where we look at it and we're probably up to the fifth iteration of improving our site. When I tell you it is highly optimized, it absolutely is. So it does do some of the things I tell you not to do, but there's a reason behind it. So if you have a reason to do these things, you know, it may be okay. But in general, we've tested it and things that move in, fade in, that do different movement, you are basically attracting my attention to it. And that's potentially a bad thing. So let me give you an example of where it could be good for a general site. And we've done this. We've done on the call to action button, uh, a slight animation that honestly, if you weren't staring at it, you would never know, but it's enough to stimulate you know, our visual cortex to draw the eyes to the call to action button, all right, to get people to take action. And we tested it. Having that little bit of subtle animation that isn't like in their face, right, but is drawing the eyes. It, it, so this is what we call design for conversion. It draws the eyes to that, con that call to action button. Now, you don't want to do that on every call to action button, all right? Uh, so you, and again, this is a testing thing. You know, if let's say you've got a landing page where um, where you've got a long scroll where they could read lots about it. The, the top part of it has got all sorts of good stuff. It's got a call to action. They, then there's a trust bar, some elements. Then there's, you know, how you use it, some benefits. Then there's maybe some user testimonials. And you've got a couple of calls to action spaces. And maybe at the very bottom call to action, that would be where I would start to use that 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 motion, that subtle motion to get people to do it. So why does Amazon do scrolling banners? I got it, so I'm skipping ahead. When you are the 800 pound gorilla in the room, you can absolutely do anything you want. Amazon probably, and here's the thing, Amazon uh, from a general standpoint violates so many basic conversion principles. And I believe that they test things, but here's the thing. There's certain categories and certain websites that no matter what, you do, okay, um, uh, people are going to buy from them, all right? People are going to buy from Amazon no matter what they do. Um, some, other experience, some other examples of where people, you know, do things. If, if you are selling things that protect my child or you've got things that are for my puppy or my cat, because these are what we call enthusiast categories, people will crawl across broken glass almost no matter what the experience is. Um, regardless what to do it. And so uh, an example of this, you know, because Alex was the one who asked about the Amazon issue years ago, and, and this is an example of a very bad touch point, and I take full responsibility. We had a client, um, it was a $20 billion hardware manufacturer, and I was talking to their executive vice president, and he said to me, well, you must be wrong because, because um, Apple does it this way. And my response was, and this is the example of how not to do something. I said to him, yeah, but you're not Apple. He did not like that answer, all right? Um, but it's true. A brand can get away with things that a non-brand can't. And even a brand would be better if they didn't do some of those things. So Alex, hopefully, that was a long answer to your question, buddy, but hopefully uh, that would, uh, uh, that, uh, that answered a couple of others. What's the difference between uh, a landing page and an actual website? Um, and, you know, uh, so here's the thing. 
so Ed's asking a couple questions about landing pages. So uh, if you have designed your website really well, then every page, almost every page on your website is a landing page of some sort because you're expecting that people are going to land on that page potentially for the first time. A landing page is wherever I land on first, okay? So like I said earlier, if you've got a, net, a lot of SEO traffic, they could land on any page. It could be a blog page. It could be your about us page. It could be, it, Lord knows what it's gonna be, all right? So you wanna make sure that you're aligning it upstream messaging and doing these things I'm talking about on every page. Now, but I think the question goes deeper, all right? And, and Ed, maybe I'm wrong, all right? But I think the question is deeper. I think it is when would you use potentially a landing page versus, you know, a, uh, you know, just send people to your your website. And the answer is, if you've got very different messaging, all right, you want to align that messaging and that user experience uh, to whatever that unique uh, user intent was. And you can't, you know, you can't basically be all things to all people on one page, okay? So by, by separating out or segmenting your visitors based on user intent or by roles and sending them to the proper page, you have a higher chance of A, um, you know, satisfying their needs and B, getting them to convert. So you would wanna use, um, uh, uh, you would wanna do both, all right? Um, Rodrigo asked a question too. Uh, so Ed, hopefully I answered your questions. And then after I answer Rodrigo's, I'm gonna go back into the presentation. That doesn't mean you can't answer quest ask questions. I'll just get to them in, in a moment. So Rodrigo asked, how do you explain customers that an optimized page will generate RR versus a fancy landing page that they usually uh, expect? Okay, um, so, I, so I think Rodrigo, I think what you're asking is people are looking for pretty and they're looking for flashy, right? And at the end of the day, um, even for us, uh, you know, we don't take on every client if they're not going to listen. Because at the end of the day, and I, I say this to people, and I don't mean to be mean, all right, but I've actually said in our first meeting with a potential client, listen, your opinion of your website or your landing page in this case doesn't matter. Neither does my opinion. The only people that matter are the people that come to your page and are going to sign up or give you money. It's not about your opinion. It's not about my opinion. And the good news in digital marketing is that all of this is trackable. All right. And so with that in mind, and if we can at least start with best practices that we've seen work in literally hundreds, if not thousands of pages, we will then get to something that makes you money because it satisfies the user intent. So it's real, and this is true, whether you're an agency or you're, you're, you've got your own website or you're a big company, whatever it is, it's not about your opinion. It's not about my opinion, guys. It is all about the visitors that are coming to your website and making sure that they are getting what they're looking for and that what they're looking for is something that you can deliver so it aligns with your company's goals, okay? So anyway, all right, let me uh, continue on. And Ed, no problem, buddy. All good. All good. All right. So let's move on here. So uh, so I, here's an example of there's all sorts of things going on in this landing page. So the colors might be right, you know, but again, what am I supposed to do here? You're giving me too, ten, too many choices here, as opposed to this is the same real estate page, you know, and it's really simple. We made it so much simpler. Again, if you design your website as if your visitor was lazy and or stupid, it just makes life so much easier. The, the problem is they had on the previous version calls to action that didn't even apply to realtor services. So by making sure that it aligned correctly, this is how you turn this kind of page into something that you could actually have a, a, an ad from that goes directly to an interior page on your website, which by the way, now becomes a landing page from an ad. So you can actually turn interior pages, if they make sense, into landing pages for your business. Now, I'm not saying don't create landing pages, you know, because you might have, even for realtors in that previous example, you might have different kinds of realtors. You might have different messaging for realtors. You might need to have multiple landing pages. I don't know but you want to make sure that you separate the landing page by visitor intent. All right, Zoom, another brand. Everybody knows Zoom. Zoom's making a killing through this pandemic, right? 
Um, but again, they've got this rotating banner. And the, frankly, this rotating banner is not adding any value to my life. I love this. A recognized magic quadrant leader as one of their rotating banners. Oh my God, I'm looking for, for meetings. How in God's name does this add any value to my life as a visitor here? This is what I call the opera school of marketing. We're like, me, 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 me. It's all about me. I don't care about you. So they want to brag. Who cares? Now there's a way to do this, but th I promise you, this is not the way to do this. All right. And, you know, interestingly enough, they do it on mobile, which is even more egregious than it is on, 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 you know, on a desktop. On mobile, you've got this little device here and you've got things happening on it. And, and the user intent is a little different on mobile than it is on desktop, typically. So what's, what's bad on desktop becomes even worse on mobile, all right? This was the question that was asked earlier where things fade in. You know, and, and you notice I, I used GetResponse as a positive example before. So they do a lot of good things here, but get sales and get whatever. The problem is they erase themselves, they build. And so now I'm focused on what they're telling me as opposed to having a nice message that I go, okay, I'm in the right place. I feel good. Why are you want? It's not adding value. A lot of a lot of people come to us with WordPress themes, and they they put things in, in place that the WordPress theme did this and it did that. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. You you have to design for the visitor. And by the way, it does the same exact thing on mobile, and it's not really adding you know value. Now they may have tested this. These are really really smart people. They may have tested this, and this may be their winner. Okay. But I promise you there's ways to do this that would put this to shame and make it a lot, uh, make it an even higher conversion. So you can test things with movement and it could be the winner, but it doesn't mean that that's the be all end all ending thing that you should get to. Uh, again, less visual distractions, all right? Here's a really nice example, you know, of, of I get what I'm looking for, you know, I know what it is, the visuals support the, the call to action right? And they're showing me what's in a winter box, right? And, you know, and then the, the call to action is, is start customizing, right? So that's a really nice call to action. All of this absolutely makes sense from a, uh, from a, a nice landing page experience. And it turns out this is actually uh, their homepage, all right? Here's another one, very clean uh, Clockify. They've got a short video to demonstrate. Now you'll notice I'm not against videos. I'm against videos that automatically play, right? Because now you're distracting me. I don't know if I want it and God forbid it's sound. So, so I'm okay with videos. Um, uh, Instapage, here's another one, you know, and I love, I love, I mean, I love this call to action. Instapage is where conversions happen, right? Customers like you get up to 400% more from their digital ad spend with Instapage. I love that. And then look at their call to action convince me. Oh my God. I wish I had thought of that. That is such a great call to action. I mean, I, I, I bow in Instapage direction wherever they're headquartered. So that was really, really very well done. All right. Use videos appropriately. All right. A lot of people uh, put videos up and frankly, these videos, you know, shouldn't be on default. Now I, I, I did say there are, there are exceptions to the rule. Like if you're doing that hella skiing or you're doing something that is, is inspirational or experiential. So it's not, it's not always a no, but for probably everybody on this call with maybe one exception, you know, videos that automatically start are a no, all right? Now, if you are gonna use videos, you wanna do it something more like this. Tell me what the video is, and it's got a title, How We Can Reduce Your Property Taxes, Learn in 60 Seconds, right? And then, you know, how does the process of track streaming work? So not only do I know what the video is, I know the benefits of watching the video, you've set my expectations for how long it is, and it adds value to the overall message on the, on the landing page, which by the way, in this case, this is a, 
an off the charts, high converting page. This is their homepage, which we turned into a massive high conversion page because it's got all of the great elements on it. It's got trust, it's got benefits, it's got clear calls to action. We're using the colors correctly. You know, if you're looking for tax grievance in Long Island, which is what they do, you know, you're gonna recognize the picture of Long Island in the background. It adds value. It's not just a gratuitous picture. The video is not a gratuitous video. So my point is all of the, 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 the things here were combined to create a great experience to get them from the landing page into applying, all right? Here's another example for DD214 Direct, another one. How to get your DD214 fast. And for those of you who have served in the military, you know that the DD214 is basically one of the discharge documents. For those of you who don't know it, if, there, if people in the military you know, retired um, are trying to uh, get a VA loan or there's certain things, other benefits, they need this form called the DD-214 and they want to get it, you know, you know, as quickly as possible. So here's a nice video that tells me, you know, what, what they're going to get. And this is an example of how to use a video the proper way. This next one is you really want to have fast load times. All right. And this, by the way, has become critical. This has always been important, but this has become critical. Um, with Google's last update in July, all right? You are being penalized by, by load times. If you do not have a, a, a website that loads extremely fast, and we've got a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a blog on this, you go to our, our, uh, our, to our, our blog pages and we've, we've outlined what you should do here. If you haven't got a page that loads fast, Google is going to kill you, all right? And now in the old days, it was just, if it didn't load fast, people get bored and, and you know we're, we're in the world of instant gratification, they're not gonna wait for a site that doesn't load. They're gonna assume it's broken or something's wrong with it, right? So uh, we'll go, and let me, uh, so Michael asks, should you sacrifice certain design loans to increase page load speed time? Yeah, Michael, I'm sorry, buddy. You know, and this pains me, this absolutely pains me, um, but, but load speed, especially on mobile, has become so important that, that you really got to make it a priority above some of the other things. Now, you don't want to sacrifice um, conversion elements per se, but, but you, 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 and he agrees. So good. Yes, I understand. I, I, I know. Yeah. So Michael, the answer is, that's what you say to them if you weren't here earlier. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters about the people who are coming to your website, right, buddy? I promise you that works, okay? So yeah, you absolutely have to make load speed time the key thing. All right, capture data fields easily. I've, we've all seen this. You know, If you want someone to register or subscribe or purchase something you know, right on your landing page or even, in, even further in your visit, you know, in their process, maybe your landing page gets them further into your funnel, Whatever it is, when they get to a message, you want to make sure that it's easy for people to know what they're supposed to do. They don't have to think. You're not asking for like everything in their uncle, you know, in here. So, you know, here, um, you know, the phone number is displayed. You know, it's nice, you know. And, and here's something else they did that I really love. All right. And let me draw on this. I, I don't normally draw on these, but, but their action block is talks get started today and their call to action is get started. So they their phone number it shows you what they're looking for. They separated first name, last name, email address. So they've done some nice things here. It's a nice clean look, right? And and I would strongly urge that, you know, this kind of thing where you you've got the the formatting in place, you you've got the CTA that matches. This is the kind of thing you absolutely want to do. Okay. You want to, on the other hand, avoid impersonal error message. You've all pressed, uh, you know, the, the 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 button and up come, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you know. So this uh, is a friendlier one. Uh, account with Stacy at SiteTuners.com already exists. That's a friendly message, right? It's not, hey, you know, if you you know error, you know, or we already have this. It's friendly, right? Um, and it's obviously the same, you know, obviously on mobile, all right? I love this one though. This is from MailChimp, okay? Another user with this username already exists. Maybe it's your evil twin, Spooky. <laughs> okay, I know it's a little over top, but I love that, okay? I mean, because, you know, it's gonna make me feel good 
about the error message versus, you know, this is a required field, you know, which, which if you have a site that turns red and all these fields come up, you're basically saying to people, hey, you are too stupid to be our client, right? So don't do that. So having said that, all right, uh, oh, and they, they show you the same thing on, uh, on mobile, so they're consistent. All right, but having said that, you know, here we've got, you know, this, these fields are required. So it turns red, you know, sometimes your plugins don't let you do everything you wanna do. But look at this, oops, it seems you've missed a spot, right? So that's friendlier. It's, it's softening the blow from the required field. All right, so a little bit of, of humor, a little friendlier, although I love the evil spooky twin thing, but if you can change your messages, that great. And here's another one, you know, uh, please select, you know, so we're saying please, you know, just like not this is a required field, you know, oops, your email address is required. We need this for email delivery. So not only did they tell you that they need it, they give you a reason why they need it. I mean, that is so wonderful, all right? And it shows that it was written by, by you know, a marketing person versus a, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a programmer. And again, I used to be a developer years ago. So, you know, I, I'm not dissing anybody who develops, but marketing people should write these messages, not developers, all right? And again, same thing. Oops, your email address required. We need this. It's very friendly, right? All right. So if you give reasons like they showed you here, it makes it really more comfortable for people to be willing to, to provide information, right? So as marketers, and, and I, it says it right here, your job is to make them feel secure and that they trust you with their details, right? They're gonna put in their credit card information, they're gonna put in a real email address, you hope. they're gonna put in their name, whatever they're putting in, you need them to feel that they can trust you, all right? So, you know, why do we need this? Email, to receive your email confirmation, phone, if we need to call you about your application, right? So it's not just give me your email and your phone. You've all seen these fields where you, you they, they are lead form where they want all this information and it's got like address and all this stuff. And it's like, well, in this case, you need the address because, you know, it's about property taxes. You're filling out a form. But you get the same kind of stuff for stuff that makes no sense whatsoever. So what are you going to do? You're going to send me something in the mail and then you're going to send me an email saying, oh, by the way, did it show up at your doorstep? And oh, by the way, I'm going to call you and say, hey, did you get that email? And maybe I'm going to come to your door. It's just nuts. OK, you, you got to be careful what, what you're asking for makes sense. And so if you can tell them why you need that information, you are so much further ahead. And it, the, obviously the same logic applies on mobile, all right? It, it doesn't matter whether it's on desktop or mobile, all right? You wanna make sure you do this. Uh, and again, and this is a nice design, it explains it all and it tells you why I'm looking for things. And this is a very high converting page on this site on both desktop and on mobile, okay? Now this, by the way, is when we were talking about um, some of the speed issues and so on. So this is an eye test, but, but here's the good news. You will get a copy of this presentation. The eye test is down here, okay? Uh, this is a link to that blog page I was talking about. Don't worry about it. We'll get you, you'll get the, the presentation so that you'll be able to go and find that particular, that page. But basically at the end of the day, here's what's interesting about this. It's not just speed. All right, it's really about user experience. The things that we've been preaching for years, all right? Google is now rewarding all of those things. They're rewarding that good user experience because they wanna make sure people aren't, aren't bouncing that whatever they deliver is actually relevant. So they wanna know that they're there, they scroll, they don't bounce, they go from page to page, they spend time on your site. All right, so, so Google is measuring now a lot more than they ever used to, you know, the satisfaction with your website experience, which also obviously includes, um, <coughs> excuse me, which also includes some speed. All right, so that, what, that blog post would probably be pretty helpful. Additionally, the last thing I'm gonna close with here is uh, for those of you um, who are new to Site Tuners, you know, I've literally written the book on this. This is my new book. It was published up on Amazon in August of, uh, of last year. So it's, it's pretty new. Uh, it, it took four years of my life 
uh, that I will never get back. So uh, if, if you order it, uh, you know, up on Amazon or you can, uh, or wherever, um, I would just ask you actually read it. I mean, literally it sucks four years of my life out. So, so if you order it, please read it. Okay, I think that's fair to ask. And if you would like to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, I would certainly welcome it. We always love to have conversations with people. We always love to connect. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you have any questions, I'm happy to stick around for another couple of minutes. But uh, either way, I want to thank you all for your time. And hopefully you've gotten something out of this. We'll be doing another one of these. We do one of these monthly. This was based on chapter three of my book. Uh, the next one will be based on another chapter. So again, have a wonderful rest of your week, folks. And we will see you hopefully on the next webinar. Take care. Bye.